Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video I want to discuss a quick overview of the regulation of cholesterol synthesis. It's not very complete, it's just a small summary and overview and kind of a visual more than anything. Um, so we know that we go from acetyl-CoA to HMG-CoA and take HMG-CoA to mevalonate in the committed step catalyzed by HMG-CoA reductase and mevalonate is eventually converted into cholesterol and that cholesterol that we're making of course is specifically in the cells okay um, and this cholesterol in the cells uh, can be converted into cholesterol esters to be stored in the cell uh, we'll see what kind of what that looks like in the lipoproteins videos in fact this video might be a good video to watch after watching the lipoproteins videos it's okay to watch it now before them, but it's also a really good idea to watch it afterwards. Uh, so this cholesterol in the cells can be converted into cholesterol esters so that they can stay and be stored in the cells, and that is done by acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase, or ACAT, which basically just tacks on an acyl group onto the OH of cholesterols to make them into cholesterol esters. Um, another thing is that, um, well actually, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So we mentioned already that HMG-CoA reductase is the, the main control site um, or control point of this process. And um, it is activated by insulin, right, because it's anabolic, and it's inhibited by glucagon, right, anabolic versus catabolic hormones. Um, HMG-CoA reductase is an anabolic hormone in that it makes this lipid, so insulin would trigger it, glucagon would inhibit it. Another thing is that um, if cholesterol is around, cholesterol in cells, it's going to, of course, inhibit HMG-CoA reductase from even being available, right? We saw in the long-term uh, video that that um, the reductase availability via transcription of the, of the gene um, to the translation of the mRNA to proteolysis, uh, if there's cholesterol already around, that's going to inhibit the reductase from even being available to do its job. So here, this is kind of the the short-term control, or excuse me, long-term. Here is the long-term, right? The fact that the cholesterol overall uh, will, um, its availability will inhibit the availability of the reductase, whereas the short-term is the phosphorylation or dephosphorylation uh, that is basically controlled by these hormones short-term. So this is the short-term control here, overview. Okay. Now, something that's actually not part of the natural regulation of it, um, but I think is important to mention, is the fact that HMG-CoA reductase, because it's an important control site, it's a target for drugs. There are specific drugs called statins that, um, that actually inhibit re the, the reductase. And they're important in treating um, individuals with, with high cholesterol levels. And so um, these statins are actually competitive inhibitors of HMG-CoA reductase. So they're important in treating hypercholesterolemia, which will be mentioned in some other videos. Now, um, another thing that I do want to mention is that cholesterol in, in cells um, can come from um, cholesterol in the blood, or LDL cholesterol. So LDL cholesterol, LDL is a lipoprotein that carries cholesterol in the blood to tissues, and it, it, it can be taken up into cells by receptor-mediated endocytosis. And it's important to recognize that, uh, that this arrow here, first of all, is pointing upwards, whereas the rest of these are pointing downwards. So the, the cells can take cholesterol from the blood and into, can take them up into the cells, right? And that is, is an important idea, first and foremost. But the other thing is that if there's already a lot of cholesterol in the cells, that's going to stop the receptor media endocytosis from even occurring, which is important, again, when I just mentioned hypercholesterolemia, is that uh, this endocytosis will be um, inhibited if there's already a lot of cholesterol in the cells. And what that ends up uh, leading to is that if, if the, it could cause a lot of LDL cholesterol to stay in the blood, which is also something that's important in hypercholesterolemia. So I hope this video helps as a sort of overview, um, kind of looking at it like this. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.